In this video, we'll take a look at extruding some surfaces and applying draft to them. Let's start a new part using our mold part template. Let's start a new sketch on the top plane. We're going to create a center point rectangle. We're going to make sure that we locate this at the origin. Let's make it 50 millimeters wide by 25 tall. Rather than extruding this with a solid boss feature, let's extrude a surface. We're going to make sure that this is 10 millimeters, just like all of our other solid extrudes. We're going to apply draft and we're going to hit the equal key to make sure that we link it to our draft global variable. Now notice that we have the option to draft inward or outward by toggling this selection and we can also cap the end. Now, unlike our thin feature solid extrude, cap end is only going to cap the end at which we're extruding up to. In this case, the 10 millimeter side of our extruded surface. This has some benefits over using a thin feature extrude because it allows you to only cap one end. You can also manually cap the ends as well. Whenever you're dealing with molded parts and drafted parts, you might find that down the road, you're gonna to have to manually create some drafted surfaces, patch certain sections of your parts by deleting faces and then manually creating those faces. So understanding how to create a drafted surface can be very helpful farther down the road. But you can also build off of this. We could do things such as offset surface. For instance, we could do a three millimeter offset surface of all of our inside surfaces and hit okay. And notice that these surfaces are all trimmed and knitted together. We have two separate surface bodies here. We take a look at a section view. You can see that we've created two individual surfaces. So now all we need to do is create a surface to patch between the two and knit them together. We have the same result when we do a solid extrude with drafted outside edges and then do a shell feature. The reason that this might be a better option is if your external geometry might be complicated or you need to make some manual edits to that. Now obviously in these cases we're dealing with simple extruded rectangles where the solid geometry is going to be the same as the surface geometry. But when you get into more complicated parts, a lot of times it's going to be easier to work with surfaces than it is the solid geometry. So understanding how to create this draft with surfaces is going to be beneficial to you overall as a designer because it gives you more options to work with. 